Okay, I'm here with a multi-talented, should I say that? Multi-talented, multi-skilled um, actress, Natalie Boyne. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for coming here. <laughs> Tell me if I forget anything when I say I saw um, writer, producer, um, actress, singer, Singer, you can say that. Composer, <laughs> choreographer. And How are you able to And a dancer. Dancer, okay. I, I, I knew I would forget something. Okay. <laughs> Tell me how you're able to do a lot of things like that. I think being an artist, it's easy. I think whenever somebody has a an eye for some kind of like success in in, in art industry in general, I feel mm. like they have more than one talent that they can explore. Mm -hmm. I often meet a lot of actors that don't just do acting. Mm -hmm. They kind of like, you know, they explore other things mm -hmm. and the way to express themselves. So I feel like it's just a part of being an artist. You kind of have to find within yourself what else are right. you capable of doing and what else do you like. Yeah, mostly from what I saw here, in, and especially in Hollywood, there are a lot of people who are mostly actors and, and producers. Right. A lot of them want to produce, yeah. they want to write, yeah, yeah, yeah. but when it comes to you, it's a, lot, a prime ballerina, right? Yeah, I mean, that was prime ballerina. Prima ballerina. Yeah, that was my first, um, my first life. I mean, I, I kind of, I started as a ballerina because my mom was a ballerina, and then I danced with um, Bolshoi Ballet. That's um, amazing. You were born to, in Kiev, uh, I born Ukraine, in Kiev, right? then right. I moved to Moscow, became a part of this Bolshoi Ballet School, uh -huh. danced with Bolshoi, uh, Bolshoi Theater. And then eventually I ended up in, um, in London with my mom and my brother. And um, I got into the summer school of Royal Ballet School. Right. And then they offered me a spot to stay there. So it was wow. between going back to Bolshoi or staying uh, with the Royal Ballet. And I chose to stay with the that, Royal Ballet. How old you were at that time? I was pretty young. I was like about, um, I would say 13, 13 uh, years did old. You, did you really start uh, dancing at four? I pretty much started dancing wow. at three, yeah, three, three years old, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was already dancing like with the Bolshoi theater because when you're part of the um, the school, uh -huh. they allow you to start performing with the theater, and we started touring and everything. Uh -huh. So I was pretty much in 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 the group dancing in the troupe um, when I was like almost like nine, ten, wow. so and then eleven, twelve, and thirteen, and then eventually I moved to London mm -hmm. and you know, got my education there as well as, uh -huh. as a ballerina and as a choreographer. Uh -huh. I studied with the Royal Ballet, danced with the Royal Opera House, and then I continued my education with Rumbrick Company, which is contemporary, mm -hmm. and then danced with them, and then wow. kind of... Must have been great for the resume, because Boisha, I, th I know they're a reference of, uh, yeah. of ballet. Even in Brazil, like people don't know uh, yeah. ballet a lot or dance. Cause it's like the top Boisha. of the top, yeah. Yeah, every time you say the word, like, you know, Boisha, everybody knows. Everybody yeah. knows. And how did you end up in L.A.? Because you, I, I, you were, as far as I know, you wanted to act, you know, a lot. I wanted to act since I was a kid, really. Like, I told really? my mom when I was like, yeah. I was like very young and I was like, oh, I want to be an actress. Um, but I don't know, it was tough because my mom was a ballerina. So mm -hmm. to convince her that I can do stuff right. with my voice as well as my body was uh -huh. difficult. She saw you as a dancer. She saw me as a dancer, yeah. yeah. Kind of like, you know, whatever she saw herself as and that was it. Right. So, you know, I still kind of like pursued that. And it was great because ballet gives you a foundation for mm -hmm. life. Like it gives wow. you such a great, um, you know, strength and power, and and just de determination. In, in, and you then know that if you had succeeded even a little bit in ballet, mm. you can kind of like pretty much succeed in a lot of things in life. Yeah, it's like you're an athlete, right? And it's yeah, like, it's yeah. it's a form of like meditation that you're yeah. like learning how to like respect yourself and and how to guide your own like you know. Uh -huh. mind to succeed and to do stuff it's because it's tough it's really I tough to be a ballerina uh, whether I was at the Royal Ballet or Bolshoi it's mm -hmm. like the competition is insane and so you know it's a survival thing right and you were already traveling because you know I'm saying this because a couple of weeks ago I was in New York and I interviewed this Brazilian girl and she's a ballerina at the Dance Theater of Harlem mm. and she's like huge right now because she was like the first black girl yeah. on a cover of, there's a magazine called, I think, I think it's Points. Yeah, Points. There yeah. you go. Yeah, she was the first uh, yeah. Brazilian, the first black in the, in the cover. Yeah. 
and she was telling me about how tough it because they tour, yeah. right? It's like a it's like a concert, and she's mm -hmm. always touring. Always touring. Yeah, yeah, but she's already. I know she wasn't young like you, but you were you were really young, and you were already touring, right? Yeah, because even in in Kiev and Ukraine, when I started mm -hmm. dancing, I got into this small school that they had called uh, Kianochka, and they were already pushing their dancers that like the kids right. to uh to perform and to tour mm -hmm. and it was tough but it was it's what i needed i suppose because mm -hmm. it kind of like got, got me so much further and more advanced than anybody else when i ended up at ball show oh. like we were already on point shoes when we were like seven years old wow. you know and it's technically you're not allowed until you're like you become 10 i think or 11 right. until you like become certain height right. Because it kind of like you can you know damage your your own mm -hmm. your own body by even mm -hmm. going on point too young, and our you know teachers didn't care. They wanted to mm -hmm. make money on us, so they're like, no, nah, they'll be fine. Just put them on point. It's cool. <laughs> they'll be all right. So right. by seven, I was already on point shoes, and so by the time I got to the Bolshoi, um, which was I was like um, also quite young, mm -hmm. you know, they saw me and they're like, oh no, we're not even ready to go on point shoes yet. You're starting from the beginning, and I was like. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I'm already doing food tests on point. Right. Like I was so advanced. Yeah, you're experienced. I was with, so experienced. Yeah, I yeah, toured yeah. already. I've been on point. I've already done food tests. I'm like, I'm. This is yeah, easy. I'm an artist. So when they saw me, yeah, they were like, okay, she can like. They put me straight into the second right. class, like like uh -huh. above a year higher than what I was supposed to go by. So, so you were always advanced. I was right? always advanced. Yeah. yeah, because I had already done stuff. You know, they pushed me so much. In right. my previous school, that I was like, this is easy for me. This is nothing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, which is great. Like, it's a great education for you, and you can kind of be like, yeah. Yeah. So it was. And fun. it's good preparation also, because when you came to LA and you wanted to act and you wanted to, you know, be an actress, yeah. uh, that should help a lot, because it's not only, it's not only like being on tour, everything else. It's just like the control also of the body. Yeah. You know, the concentration, everything. I guess, right? Yeah. No. Exactly. Like the. I'm. I'm yeah, I'm gonna repeat it again. Like ballet is definitely the foundation right. of a lot of things. It kind of it teaches you life real mm -hmm. fast, mm -hmm. whether you want it or not. Mm -hmm. And it's just up to a personality. Like some people can handle it, some people can't. And right. Luckily for me, I was like, yeah, tell me more that I can't do something. Right. And I, I will do it. It's the opposite. You tell yeah. me don't do it, and I'll be like, really? Okay. You look like a tough one. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, don't mess with me. I'm like, what did you say? <laughs> Hold how, on one second. How was it for you in the beginning here in LA? Because you had to navigate through this yeah. crazy world of uh, Hollywood, and it's a big competition here, I can see, right? Mm -hmm. You talk to people, and everybody's like looking for the hot producer. Oh, they have yeah. to put me in the movie. Blah, blah, blah. It's, it's always about that talk. And you are like Ukrainian, Ukrainian, you know, ballerina. From London. How was, yeah, how was your, your English? Was always, uh, was I, grew, always, I mean, I lived in London yeah, after. So. When I moved to London to, to go to the Royal Ballet, I literally stayed in London for the next eight, so nine you years. You thought you were English? So I had a British, British, British right. So when I first came here, I spoke like this. It's quite funny, uh -huh. um, but anyways, yeah, it was it was it was it was tough because it's a different world and right. it was a completely different outlook on life and and it was fake. It was more fake than what I'm know. used to as a ballerina. Yeah. As a ballerina, I'm used to you know people literally flipping in front yeah. of me and being like whatever you know and walking off and. Yeah. Putting a stand and saying, "Oh, you can't do this." Whatever. That's sports. That's for sports. Me as a exactly. Player, same thing, right in yeah. front of your face, they're saying, yeah, I, "I can do this, this. You can't." Yeah. It's a challenge. It's always a game. It's always a competition. Uh -huh. Here, it's not like you don't even know what they're saying. Like because That's, it's so, <laughs> it's fake. Like they're always smiling to your face, and I'm That's, like, "Just be real. Tell me what I cannot do, or what you like, like what you like and dislike about me." That's funny you're saying this because I, you know, I I live I lived in New York for like 15 years, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And we were comparing New York to LA, and I was saying, "Listen, because oh, yeah. in New York, people just they don't so want to. Okay, get out of here. I don't want yeah. to. But here, it's like it's a. They're smiling. It's a they circus. Say hello. It's like a, yeah. yeah, people are just you know you're always behaving like you have to yeah. behave in a certain way because if you don't do this, they're gonna think that it's kind of it's weird. I like that analogy. It's a circus. So we're all animals in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say LA. that. LA. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Because it's like it's it's very unfortunately there's a lot of like yeah. fakeness going on and it's mm. not that they mean bad by it it's just like you don't want to 
offend, I think, a lot of people here in LA because there are a lot oh. of actors and there are oh. a lot of artists mm. that a lot of them are successful. And, and once you deal with actors that are bigger, unfortunately, what happens is they they become more um, more sensitive mm. to things oh, yeah. because actors are like that. You know, yeah. they're insecure. They're mm. a lot of them need need that pep talk, need attention. Need yeah. attention. Yeah, so I feel like people just learn how to adapt to that uh -huh. and they just learn how to talk to art artists in a different way and to make them feel better. Mm -hmm. And hence that's why a lot of producers you meet, a lot of directors, they're just having that visage on all the time and they mm -hmm. forget to like switch it off just in case they don't know, are you an actor? Because you never know. Now you go to like yeah. a restaurant, you go to like, you know, to the any gym and most of those people that work there, they're all actors. So you don't want to offend it's anybody. Funny, You're yeah. like, let me just be polite and just in case, because so, you never know. It's like your whole life here is based on this, right? And on having go to yeah. lunch, going to dinner, going to auditions, going to this, and that. It's kind of so. How did you how, how did you begin here? Like like, what was your first step here in LA? I mean, the first thing I knew, um, which my mom told me, is education is everything. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in like talent waking up and just saying oh look i'm so talented i'm I was born born, and, yeah, yeah, I'm no. born actress no. i'm born to succeed or whatever no. no just my company is called born to, to burn it's yeah. <laughs> but it's not like yeah so i knew that i need to go to school so i went to uh at least strasberg institute first i actually studied at, at the american academy of dramatic arts for three months it was right. a summer course and i really enjoyed it and that's when i called my parents and i was like i'm staying Mm. Um, at a time, I was actually injured, so I couldn't dance. I, I tore a ligament oh. on my ankle, which mm. happens a lot to soccer players yeah. and ballerinas. I, it happened with me. I had a surgery yeah. on my left ankle, my right knee. Both, yeah, both ankles yeah. are messed up, even though I can still dance, you know. Really? But that kind of it, it's this it's it's the pressure that we put yeah, ourselves through. So I went to Lee Strasberg afterwards. Um, mm. I stayed there for um, quite a few years, like two years, I suppose, two mm -hmm. years, and then. While I was doing that, I actually became a finalist at the actor Studio mm -hmm. here in LA, in New York, and yeah. I, I got That's the chance the, it's to went study. By Al Pacino, Al Pacino, Al Martin Lando, yes. Yeah. So I got I got a chance to Alec study Baldwin. with yeah. the best. I mean, like yeah, Martin Lando was my moderator. He was an amazing mm -hmm. teacher. Passed away unfortunately a year ago now. Um, event finally, I became a member, um, and I was actually the last member he had admitted to the actor wow. studio that, that right before he passed away. It was the saddest thing. Yeah, wow. literally the next day he passed away. Really? Yeah, it was so That's sad. Crazy. So I'm so happy that I managed to get through the door, of, right. you know, being admitted must have been happy, by yeah. the best. Oh yeah, yeah, it Obviously. was it was amazing. So I stayed. So basically, my studying was my primary fo focus because I knew mm -hmm. being, you know. A Ukrainian, but actually I have a Russian passport. Uh -huh. It was hard for me to get any kind of work. I also studied actually parallel to that at mm. Santa Monica College. I studied psychology and Spanish. Cool. Uh -huh. So it's like I, I needed to get the most that I can during the time that I was here because I was on student visa, couldn't mm -hmm. really work that much. Mm. So uh, that was my first time spending here in LA. Right. And then uh, finally, you know, when I got my um, OPT school, like practical training for mm. a year from um, another school that I was attending, wow. I was attending like many four, schools you attending? four at the same time because wow. I needed to get like I need to get the most out of like mm -hmm. obviously expedite and learn the most I can as an actress. Mm -hmm. But also I needed to get that practical training for me to get the actual mm -hmm. first year of work wow. permit so I can start working uh -huh. and that I needed to get a lot of mm -hmm. hours in so finally when I got that I spent that year so technically I was here for three and a half years okay. and then I I left when I applied for a one visa mm -hmm. I left I was waiting for it for a long time to get approved uh, finally got approved and then finally I had to back to where to Ukraine or I to went to London? Russia oh, I to went Russia. to I went to London to see my mom for like six months and then I went to Russia because in mm -hmm. order to get an O1 visa which I got approved but then mm -hmm. I reapplied for a green card mm -hmm. and that took a long time for them to kind of admit like admit it they said mm -hmm. well I needed to get a lot of documentation a lot of awards a lot of movies back from my own place from my own country right so at the time you know I had my passport I was Russian I mm -hmm. need to go back and I needed to start my career again mm -hmm. And I never knew how long it was going to take me to get back to States. That was the bad wow. part about it. When I left, uh -huh. I was under under assumption that I'm going to come back and I'm going to start like my work. Mm -hmm. 
but I never did, unfortunately, because like they were like, well, we're still reviewing your documents. Wow. So what period was that? What were you, you remember? The first year of Obama. What is it? I don't even. I don't, I don't even know, remember. but that's when he became the. Yeah, yeah. Probably that. 2010, right? 2011, yeah. yeah. 2010, I think. That was so. That's what. Um, so basically, it took it took them every single day. I was waiting mm-hmm. for my mail because they were going to confirm me mm-hmm. to have my green card or not, and that took me three and a half years. So I waited I for mail. So while, for three you, and a half while you were years. waiting, when you were waiting there for three years, what were you doing? Like you, I was acting? working. I was acting in Moscow. I opened my own company, which is production um, company. We, I opened my production. Well, no, I opened my dance company. Oh, I dance went back company. to my roots, it's and so I ma- it's so much stuff. And I started chore- choreographing, and I became mm-hmm. a choreographer, and that's how I worked with lots of people like Paul Abdul and mm-hmm. Jackson's Five. And oh, Jackson Five. Nelly. By the way, the Jackson Five. Uh, I brought Jermaine Jackson to Brazil to do the yeah. uh, to to play in my uh, to sing in my All Star game, and we have a nice um, we have a nice connection to the Jackson family. I was yeah. able to meet Joe before he passed away, his mm-hmm. father, and then I met Latoya, yeah. and then uh, you know we wanted to bring Jackson Five to Brazil to to, so to let play. me know. Yeah, of course. There you go. That's literally <laughs> what I do. I I have my own company. So you choreographed their set too, their show. I worked with them on set, yeah, on, mm-hmm. on the show in, mm-hmm. in, in St. Petersburg, and I bring artists to oh, whatever okay. you want me to. Like, whoever mm-hmm. you want to work with, uh-huh. I basically as manage them as, as, not as a promoter, but mostly like, uh, probably like a, a personal, like, booker. So whoever you need to book, uh-huh. I can book them I for gotta you. I got to add that one to, to for the, all the roles. Yeah, I don't promote I that much because like, it's mostly like whenever people want somebody, right, I'm like, right. sure. You know, like, and yeah, I worked with like, I, I did a small like booking with, with Stallone, you know, like nice. um, with whenever artists need to be booked, like Michelle Rodriguez, you know, Owen Wilson came to my to one of my cool. um, uh, festivals and like mm-hmm. charity of, of festival ballet that I created in, in, in Moscow. Right. So I took, you know, I got myself busy while I was mm-hmm. waiting, even though yeah. my family already thought that, oh, okay, she's settled in, she moved to Moscow, that she's good, she's uh, working, she's acting, you know. I had, I had done a big movie at a time that came out in, in theaters, a in, like, in, couple in of TV shows, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I was doing good. And they were like, oh, she's settled in. She's good. She's close by. She's not going back. Inside of you, you were like... Inside my heart, I was like, they don't even know that the minute I get that that envelope, yeah, that green card approved, I'm out of here and I'm not coming back. (laughs) Yeah, and the funny part is at the time I even had a boyfriend who I met and I kind of like found him. I came to him and I was like, look, do you want to be my boyfriend? He's like what's the catch sounds like there's oh, a yeah, catch yeah. and i'm like of course there's a catch of course because what is it i'm like well i'm gonna stay with you for as long as i can mm-hmm. until the day that i get my green card and then so you'll never see me again. Gonna... <laughs> pretty much yeah i'm like i don't care how you view it boyfriend. you can love me you don't have to love me i don't care what you think about me but, That's insane. <laughs> but you'll never see me again and he was like this is bullshit like there's no way and i'm like i can pretty much have a bet with you like i know how i am so even though the guy like fell in love with me and Considering like like you know Marrying. serious mm. serious yeah serious future with me. <laughs> Poor guy. I know it's sad, but at the same time <laughs> I was sad. like it's sad. But I'm always a person of my word. That's my thing. I think that right. comes from my education as a ballerina. Like what right. I say, I do. Right. What I can do, so I don't do. This is gonna end no matter what. Yeah. So when I got my green card, you know, he saw it, and I was like, it's just a matter of time. And literally the next day, I, I was gone. Never went back again. Listen, you've been my boyfriend for a couple of months, but that's about it. That was <laughs> it. Was a year. It was a year. It was, and, a, year? It was a year and two, like Jeez. a year and a half. Did you take it well? I don't know. <laughs> it didn't I don't know. Care. It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> when I when I leave something behind. That's about it. And and I cared about him, you know, tremendously. But I feel like I have this thing about me that I know when to move on and when to kind of like let it Drive go. Drive to work. Yeah. Yeah, and my my. You know, my dream was always to be here, so mm-hmm. there was nothing that was going to stop me. Especially after I got my green card. I mean, really, I'm going to stay in Moscow and get married and have kids? <laughs> no. I'm like, dude, you got to be insane. Like, I don't care how much I love this, but my dad was there. They couldn't believe it. I, oh, that... I closed all my stuff. I said goodbye. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this is well, it's a dream. I mean, you're chasing came, the dream. Yeah, yeah, and I came here and I had to start over again. Like, oh, I had nobody yeah. here again. New stuff. Yeah. And Everything didn't care. changed, and, and I didn't care. care. Yeah, it was a won. matter of like. Pfft, I'd rather try this again ten times more than be there. And, and before, like, meanwhile, while you were like trying to work, were you already um, training 
fighting here, like jujitsu all the time. I did. We connected because our friend Regan Machado. He's a yeah. Well, I studied. Man. I yeah. studied actually like training and in, in, in martial arts and like and fighting on on screen fighting, mm. mainly at Strasbourg. That was my first okay. class that I totally just. I was like, oh my god, doing some kind of action, being physical, because mm-hmm. at a time, like you know, I was a ballerina, still, I was still dancing. Yeah. I still danced for like a couple of three years afterwards. Um, but I jumped into that class with Benny the Jet, who's like an, a yeah. legend, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is great. Like I could possibly use my, you know, flexibility, my technique, athletic, yeah. athleticism, yeah, and put it on film. That's cool. I can combine the two. Wow. And I just I started really like enjoying what I did, and then. After I came back already, that's when I started taking more classes um, with jiu-jitsu and I, that's how I met Regan, Hegan and, yeah. and I trained with him a little bit. It was, yeah, it's, to me it's fun. I, I love it's putting like everybody my... everybody knows him, him and here in LA. It's incredible. Yeah, oh, I love putting, I personally love putting my body through, mm-hmm. not pain, but seeing what I can tolerate right. and kind of like seeing what, what limits I can go through and mm-hmm. it's just, it's yeah. always a challenge. Like I love challenging myself. That's my main goal in love. I mm-hmm. love to challenge and see what I can do, what I cannot do. That must impress a lot of like producers, agents, because you're like uh, athletic, and you're like you're a ballerina, you're an athlete, um, mo- mostly action movies, right? You must be the perfect fit. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm focusing on right now to yeah, see how I can expedite my career in that. Because with all the challenges, and then there's another one: you're a woman. Mm. And you know how it is. I've, I've seen you uh, talking about how difficult it is to be in a woman, be in a lead role. Mm-hmm. And you were able to uh, to have a lead role in a, in a movie called Awaken, right? Yeah. And that was a horror movie? No, that was an action. It was an action yeah. movie? Wow. That was a, like a, it had some horror elements, but it was mostly action. It was a lot of like fighting that I had to do. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough to get roles being the lead as a woman, I think, in, mm. in general. I don't think it's just for me. I think mm. there's just not that many female roles available, unfortunately. Mm. Right. Most of the time you watch a movie and there's like 40 men and there's only two women and that's about yeah. it. You know, So yeah. it's just, it's sad, but we're slowly trying to change that, you know, with the whole, you know, Me Too uh, campaign and, and just the support, the fact that we deserve the same equilibrium. I feel like maybe it's slowly slowly adapting mm. but I, I feel like it's just such a small impact right now it's still mm. still gonna take years and years mm-hmm. probably after me to really hit that mm. that level of, of of being being the same as you know as a male yeah you know? well yeah it's kind of so, hard but uh, and I imagine there's some um, I don't know what to call what but it's not even just work. it's not even just in US it's it's yeah it's we're everywhere. talking about we're talking about the market in general for movies Mm-hmm. Being a producer, like I understand the market the most now, I understand the numbers, the mm-hmm. you know the value of people. I understand what I'm capable of doing, what I'm capable of putting myself through. Right. You know, and just you got to be realistic. Like, what, what what kind of females sell? You know, the world. Forget yeah. about U.S. What can we? What kind of movies will you know mm-hmm. Eastern Europe or or yeah. or you know like Muslim countries will buy? Mm-hmm. None. It's it's. We're being realistic. There's none of them are going to be okay with female being the lead, mm-hmm. you know, just because of their cultures and the way they've been brought up. So, we're trying to break it through to the world, not just to mm-hmm. U.S. market, and say, hey, right. we can actually handle as much as men can, and we yeah. can be the leaders, and we can still be the, you know, uh-huh. the lead in the film and carry it on through, just like as men can. Yeah, but it's important to be like someone tough like you, you know, exactly. that want to do it, you know, it's, uh, what was your movie here, like, to, to, like the first one? I think that I had like the, the, I don't know if I had the, the break, I think The Expendables 3 gave me a really good start mm-hmm. and just gave me the, the recognition mm-hmm. um, that I have today, um, not that it was a, an amazing breakthrough role, because mm-hmm. it was a tiny part that I just played with amazing cast, and I was just, yeah happy to be even involved in that and mm-hmm. I think that's what uh, what helped me is the fact that there there weren't that many women mm-hmm. again it was only Ronda Rousey um, oh. and myself wow. so it's like it was such a limit limitless cast you know all wow. those amazing men talking about trust testosterone you know like mm-hmm. Stallone and up in Antonio Banderas and, and Harrison, Schwarzenegger, Ford. And Harrison Ford and Mel Gibson Mel and Gibson you're, you're his wife right? I played his wife exactly oh, yeah. like 
those amazing men and action mm -hmm. stars all put together in one film. Uh -huh. I was so fortunate to even meet them at the same time. Was this nice? Yeah. You know, like all of them, like, oh my God, you guys are all here. I don't I was, have to try my yeah, best to was, be in movies with just you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you this because for you, that was, you know, you waited three years and a half. You always yeah. dreamed about being here, chasing the dream and all of that, waiting for a visa. And then, and just in a blink of an eye, you were, all those people, like the legend ones. Yeah. I see that you um, that you worked also with Sharon Stone, with Jessica Alba, Jessica with Alba. Uh, with Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, I worked with the. I worked with Tommy Lee Jones. I worked with Jordan Moya. I worked with uh, with uh, Jessica Alba. I worked with Jason Statham. After that, that's yeah. a lot of yeah, a more lot people. Of... Uh, yeah, I've I've been a part of like those movies that I've met those people, mm -hmm. and they're just. They're amazing. They all have their own, you know, story to tell. They all have their own technique that they go by as actors, which is like always fascinating for me to watch. Mm -hmm. To be like, hmm, how do you, how do you approach your career? You right. know, how do you, how do you get on set and what do you mm -hmm. do? You know, like, and it's 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 interesting to watch and just learn people. And it doesn't really matter how you get there. You know, as long as you get there. So to the to me, it's always like, well, what's your what's your secret? You know, and mm -hmm. I'm always trying to figure them out, but. Not everybody tells. Most people of don't course. say the yeah. things, you know. Like you say, there's some of them are insecure. They don't want to, you know, yeah, spill exactly. the beans. Right? Yeah, I once heard an interview with uh, Mel Streep, mm. um, and I was in in the audience, and I really wanted to ask you yeah. a question. So how do you do it? How do you like? How do you change? Uh -huh. Tell me a secret so I can just uh -huh. steal it and become the Mel Streep that we wow. all dream to be. Um, and then she started answering the question, and, and what I was fascinated that. You know, she's, she talked for like 30 minutes and I was just like listening like, yeah, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I'm like, thank you so much, yeah, yeah. And then I sat down and I was like, wait, that didn't, that, didn't, that, didn't, that, didn't, that didn't answer at all my question. Like, well, what the hell do I do now? Like, she that confused, smart. That she, confused she wanted... me even more. I was like, wait, so what do I do now? I'm sorry, she, what, what was it again? She knew what she was she doing, She knew what right? she was doing. And Obviously. I was like, I think, I, I think I'm getting it. Yeah, it was like, right. she's like, it's, a, it's like a mouse, like running after cheese or something. Right. I was like, wait, I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. Wait, 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 what? I'm even more confused now. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so it's like, it's just, you know, they, they have their own secrets they go by. Yeah. And it's like, everybody is unique. And that's what, that's what I've learned when I was even on, on Expendables 3. Uh -huh. I came several times to the set and I watched you know, everybody work and it was Stallone who has his own way of approaching acting, mm -hmm. you know, Antonio Banderas who just uses his crazy charm and, mm -hmm. you know, this Latino personality that he uh -huh. has, Wesley Snipes who has very deep understanding of acting and, and just, just work itself. Um, and then you know Harrison Ford, and then you have Schwarzenegger, and then you have Dolph Lundgren, who I've worked with a lot. But it's good that you're able to like you know observe them, yeah, observe yeah. And, 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 and then of and course Mel Gibson analyze each of them and yeah. see, like get some of the secrets. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as much as you can from just watching yeah. their work, you yeah. kind of just be like, oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I don't know. I don't know if I would do that. You know, it's it's whatever you can. In the end, what matters is that you're given a part, and you know you mm -hmm. have your own understanding where the part takes you and what's mm -hmm. the what's today and what's tomorrow and then how you get there it's up to you yeah so. and by working with them you realize why they're there right yeah pretty much oh yeah, yeah. because of their yeah mostly with their confidence and, and mm -hmm. their and and yeah. it's like the, the years that you put on in your body and then you're mm -hmm. like this this character and, and mm -hmm. just your own personality is what shows the most is when you're like when you're on set and you're mm. absolutely calm and you mm. have this yeah. relaxation, like in, in acting, we call it relaxation. Yeah. The more an actor relaxed, mm -hmm. the better he is as an actor. Wow! And so, and you feel that's that cool when one. you're working with Mel Gibson, they're, they're just, they just, they have it. They're cool. Yeah. But like and they sometimes got you're it. nervous and it goes like, what are you nervous at? Come down. No, they're, yeah, they're this, chill. Yeah. They're like, they got it. They're like, <laughs> you're like, holy shit. I was just, I want to be like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, all right, I'm ready. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Yeah. I got it. Uh-huh. And, and they're like, just, sweating and they're before, like, yeah. stop, just stop. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Just stop. And you're like, what do you mean? We're doing it. <laughs> and they're like, look, you're not doing anything in real life. You don't have to do anything in film, you know, just stop, and most just let them, it go. Most of them, yeah. I think they wear different hats, right? Most of them like produce yeah. or write or do something. And you were the awakened one, you, were, you produced it? I produced it, I co-wrote it, yeah. I, I played the lead, I 
sang my song. Yeah, you, know. you sang the uh, Yeah, I, I sang a I song called Awaken. Yeah. yeah, it's on YouTube. You can guys actually purchase it. I thought, hey, my first feature film that I produced through my company is Seven mm -hmm. Heaven Productions. And I was like, I'm going to put the most I can into this and see how I can benefit. But how is it to produce a movie where you're acting at the same time? It should it's be... It's always tough. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm preparing. I'm in pre-production right now for a mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. And it's always tough. It's just like... You have to wear so many hats and the mm -hmm. most thing that you have to do is like when am I the producer and then when am mm -hmm. I the actress you know like you have yeah. to kind of like know when to let it go and uh -huh. then know how to be tough and actually talk to your crew as 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 a boss you know and mm -hmm. have them realize that look we're not just here to play games I'm not yeah. just here as an actress you have to respect me, you know, mm -hmm. plus being the woman. And you have to take care of all other stuff. And you're I have not, to take care of everybody else, yeah. Yeah, instead of just, like, concentrating on your character, you have to, like... Which is, you know what, I'm thinking, like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this movie in December and January, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and it's an action film, it's really cool, I'm What's super movie, excited right? about it. It's called Acceleration. Acceleration. Acceleration, okay. it's uh -huh. fast, it's, it's kind of similar to, uh, um, I would say... You know what? It's a unique movie. Forget it. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's nothing like it. No, it's. The, I, I'm sure we can find like comparisons, but I don't like uh -huh. to look. I don't like to compare movies. You just you watch it and you make your own assumptions. Because you had one with. Uh, I, I thought that um, Awaken was a horror movie. That's why. Because there's another one that you record in a castle, mm. which called Ghost of. Ghost of Garib is called yeah. in, in in Turkey. And mm. the U.S. name is actually uh, Vlad's Legacy. It's uh -huh. on 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 uh, Netflix, and you can rent it on iTunes. And yeah. do you like those kind of movies, like the horror movies, or um, you the I personally, movies? well, here's the thing. <laughs> I personally love to watch since I was a kid mm -hmm. horror movies. Like my mom thought I was crazy. Like yeah, I, think I so too, literally but... was like three years old, and uh -huh. I would be like, I would watch the most disgusting like guts falling out, you know, like killing and like zombies. I was zombies. yesterday watching Overlord. Have you watched Overlord? Oh, I saw that. My I goodness. I saw that It was movie. like a war movie. It was so with, cool. And yeah, he said... I loved it. I was with Regan. Regan said, it's a horror movie. And I was like, no, this is a war movie. He said, so wait good. for it. It's and there's so like good. zombies all over the it's place. So That's cool. crazy. I loved it. And I loved the, like, the way that it was shot. It was great. Yeah, yeah was so basically my favorite genre to watch is horror movies. To shoot... I, I knew mean, it was something with you, with the horror thing. Not just, yeah, not <laughs> I know, that's why when I'm on set, I'm like, this is so cool, this is so exciting. People think I'm the weird one, you see? Not, yeah, look, yeah, look yeah. What no, look what she's saying. I, but I love to shoot, to shoot, I love, I love action, because I, I get to do my, you know, my own stunts and, and fighting, mm -hmm. and right. that's always fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I love comedies, I love drama, of course, you know, whatever it is that, that I get to challenge myself in, right. I'm, I'm in. I feel like if we don't challenge ourselves, then we're not doing something. We're not doing ourselves justice. Yes. So, <laughs> so yeah. tell us about your new projects. What, what, you, what you got going on right now? My oh. next movie I'm shooting is called Acceleration, <laughs> and it's starring myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I'm working with Dolph Lundgren, mm -hmm. and uh, I have Michael Jai White oh. in it. Uh, it's a fun little cast, but great action, a lot of action. It's uh, obviously by its title, you can tell that it's going to be a fast car, you know, accelerating, right. you know, um, um, great. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a fun movie that I'm going to be doing and I'm That's playing great. a lead. I'm doing my own stunts, a lot of fast car driving, a lot of fighting, a lot of uh, cool scenes. And That's what you made for action. Exactly. You're, you're so, but I'm also the lead producer, so I'm kind of like juggling mm -hmm. the both things right now, which is the tough part. Hard work. And then uh, I have the next movie coming out next year as well um, called Hard Night Falling, which I just shot with Dolph Lundgren in, in Rome, directed by uh, Giorgio Serafini. Um, so we're excited about that. That's another action film that I, mm -hmm. that I wrapped, and uh, it's cool. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's like it's Rome. I got to stay in Rome for like, uh -huh. you know, almost a month. It's been like it's been it's been a blessing. It's been so cool. Nice. Yeah. So that yeah. one. And then if you guys have if you haven't checked out my movie, uh, The Executioners, Which, check it out. Oh, that was the that was what year was it released this year? It was released this, was year. this year. Yeah. It's I I think I it's still on Redbox. It. It's still I think it's still on Redbox right now. I, I play a really cool psychological character there, so I think it you know, appreciate really? it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check yeah, it out. Yeah, Lionsgate released it. Yeah, it's it's a fun film. It's That's... it's it's a little difficult to watch for some people, depending on what they like. It's it's violent, what? but oh, it's violent. It's violent oh. Yeah, but 
It's it's good. There's a really good ending. There's a good twist oh. in the end. You'll enjoy it. I've so, seen the so many pilot movies. <laughs> I'm gonna check it out. I'll sure yeah. check it out. Uh, to finalize this, how do you keep in shape? What what do you train uh, a lot? Train I a train lot. a lot. Yeah, especially like recently because I just shot the movie in Rome. I did action, a lot of action. I was so happy to work with Dolph. Mm. He actually directed one of my action scenes. Oh, really? It was so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was like, are you kidding me? Creed two coming out? Go like, I can't wait to see it. I'm sure he did great in it. So yeah, when he was like behind the scenes and just telling me like, no, don't do this, and the right hook, the left hook, and I'm like, dude, this is awesome. Like, <laughs> you're always like, around. With, you're always around with legends, you know. It, yeah, this is, this is really it's great. so much fun. Oh yeah, yeah, like when I was, when I remember I shot with um, uh, the Expendables three and I met Wesley Snipes. We, mm -hmm. we like we were really good friends um, for um, quite some time, mm -hmm. and he taught me how to like. Fight. Well, we were just messing around, training, mm -hmm. but he told me a few things and I was like, this is cool. The blade right. himself, like right. teaching you how to like, you know, uh -huh. do some moves. It's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's great. You yeah. always see, they, they have that knowledge behind mm -hmm. them and so it's always valuable to listen what they yeah. have to say. But that's actually a compliment to your effort and your hard work and everything yeah. you, uh, you chased, your dream and you're here and yeah. you hope everything goes perfectly for you. You deserve it. Congratulations. Well, thank you. And no, thank you I, this is here. just the beginning, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much.